Hi, folks. This is Rick Emmer to Triumph. This is Mark Merrill, also known as Johnny B. Bad. Yo, guys, it's Mark McKay. Hey, this is Frank Fletcher. Hola, amigos. This is Billy Sheehan. Hey, guys, this is John Karabi. Hey, guys, it's Leather Leone. What's up, guys? Cassandra Carson here from Paralandra and The Life Project. What's up, everybody? It's Logan from All the Pretty Things. Hey, this is Cody Hall. Hey, this is Sammy Lee, drummer of the band Red Rain. My name's Reggie, and you are listening to the Weekly Floor Podcast. Thanks so much for joining the most amazing twosome out there. The most amazing things that can happen to a human being will happen to you if you lower your expectations. Welcome to the Weekly Floor Podcast. Here are your hosts, TBT and Ace. Holy crap. It seems like it's been at least... Two weeks since we've been here. Who are you? Um, hi. My name is TBT. This guy over here, that's Ace. Welcome to episode 88 of the Weekly Poor Podcast. If you're watching the video live, which I hope you are, streaming live on the Book of Face and YouTubes, uh, jump into the chat. Whether you're chatting on Facebook or you're chatting in uh, YouTube, we're there. So jump in. Who's in there right now? we got a few already. If you guys are in there, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Um, Natalie, our moderator, is in there keeping people um, following the rules because that's what she does, even though she breaks them all herself. I mean, that's not a lie. She breaks them all. Um, well, you hey. write the bylaws. You break the bylaws. Yeah. Did we even write those? Natalie did. That's, that, that's exactly what it is. Um, so two things right off the bat here. Number one. Happy day after the apocalypse did not happen day. <laughs> we survived. Yeah, I don't know how. This was like, the world was supposed to end like it was Y2K all over again. I, that's exactly what I said. I compared this to Y2K and it's all going to end. Rockets are flying out, from, uh, falling from the sky, all that yeah. stuff. Satellites are breaking down. Right. Nothing. We had the day off of work. Because of the influx of 35,000 people coming into our county. We live in Indiana. We were in, in at, at, at uh, ground zero. 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 Yeah, ground zero. So we were going to be completely covered. Complete darkness. And, uh, yeah. Do you know how many showed up? Like, maybe 1,500. Total. I, I thought the purge was on. I thought that was going to happen, the purge. When the totality of the darkness came. Yes. In, in that, however, what was it? A couple minutes? Three minutes? Like three, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all of the crime you could commit in three minutes, uh, it's a freebie. That's what I thought. I, I did look for the, um, or I listened for the horn. You know, the purge horn? Yeah. Never heard it? Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah, so there, there's literally like no purge. I don't know. I don't understand. But you live so far out that there, the, you know, there's no sound going to reach you that far out. I would not have heard it. Yeah, and you're so far back off the roadway. I mean, you got a head start. I, I mean, that's but true. If there was a zombie apocalypse, like you're in a good spot. I know. You you have you're, an open invitation. Yeah, and your worry is running out of ammo. That's your worry. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for a different show. But yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, they wouldn't know where to go. Are they going to go here? Are they going to go to the boathouse? You know, what? What are they going to do? That's fine. Whatever. But yeah, um, it was cool. You know, the next one's in like, what, 40 years? Not something. Yeah. yeah. And the path does yeah. not take it over us. We will not be at ground zero. However, if in 40 years, Lil TBT is still where she's at in Florida, she will be at ground zero. I, I sat there and in just utter confusion of eighth grade science trying to figure out how, since we all have the same moon and we all have the same sun, how we can't all see the same thing. And I've got my wife yelling at me about how dumb I am. And I'm like, no, explain it. It makes no sense. My son is drawing pictures for me, <laughs> trying to show me how, you know, science works and astronomy. Yeah. You know, apparently eventually, I got, I got it through my head. But Yeah. Well, apparently it's 20 years. I was corrected in the chat. It's not 40 years. It's only 20 years. So I actually may still be alive for that. So that's good. Um, God, 20 years, I hope. Yeah. Here's, here's something I thought of yesterday as I was sitting in the front yard. 
watching this thing, I was like, ah, this is what Pink Floyd was talking about. Exactly. Because we this were literally the on the dark side of the moon. Exactly. My, whoa. Mind blown. Mind blown. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't find any Transformers. No Decepticons. No Sam Wit Wiki. No, this was it was disappointing for all the things you thought might happen. Well, so is Y two K. Yeah, but that was oh my god, that would have been a disaster. Yeah, but would we get out of that Y two J? We did, which yeah. was great. Uh, can we go ahead and uh, talk about the elephant in the room? There's an elephant somewhere. There is. You can't. You can't. You won't notice this if you're listening to the podcast and not watching it. Um. You're wearing a hat. I am. I told you I was going to wear a hat tonight. But but you told me, everybody else, nobody knows why you're wearing a hat. Nobody's even said anything about it, and I'm shocked. It's it's a fashion thing. Isn't it? I mean, can a guy change up the fashion a little bit? I mean, you're kind of dressed like Crocodile Dundee today. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you like the bush shirt? Yeah. I'm ready to go hunting crocs. You know, so... No, uh, I, the shirt is a whole other story that you don't want to hear, but I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> if, if I wore a different hat, you'd get it. But, but Fair uh, enough. No, I am wearing a hat. You're correct. Um, Natalie's already trying to spoil it before I can even talk. How about we um, just delete her? <laughs> uh, so, uh, reason we were off last week, I had surgery on my shoulder, my left shoulder. Right. Two words which I cannot say together. Shoulder surgery. Yep, not trying. So uh, I am currently rehabbing said shoulder, and I am left-handed. It's my left arm, and Weird. that makes it hard to comb my hair. And, and, and whatever I need to do to, to look nice and pretty for this show and anything else. So I decided there was no point in having hair. And, and and went your route, so to speak. So, under this lovely New York Yankees hat, there's barely anything there. Who shaved it for you? I went to somebody that oh. cuts my hair. Too. You know, you yeah. could have just called me. Yeah, I, I and, guess I could have. And you could have looked like this. It is nice. I mean. I, thank you. I take pride in it. Sometimes it shines, sometimes it doesn't. It's just the elephant in the room being the hat. You never wear a hat. You never wear your bush shirt. And here we are. So, yeah, you had shoulder surgery. See, if I can say it low or slow, right. it's okay. Um, on your left shoulder. Yeah. My, well, uh, right. But what's the technical thing? Uh, well, my rotator cuff was torn. Ah. You know, because you know, I'm out, you know, six months now from throwing curveballs. Right. And uh, I had some bone spurs that needed cleaned up. And then I had some arthritis in the shoulder. So they fixed the tear in the rotator cuff, shaved the bone spurs off, and then they cut off part of my collarbone. <laughs> Just That's didn't the, need it? Didn't need it. That's where all the arthritis was. Oh. Cut it off. Well, I have arth arthritis in my knee. So uh, cut it off. Let's see, that's what I'm saying. However... Peg leg. That fits with the, the, the hairstyle you have, though. I know. That would be great. I mean, I'm down. I'm totally down. Someone is suggesting I wear a wig. Wow, let me guess. It's probably Natalie. Oh, no. That would be um, Mrs. TBT. I mean, why would I? Is there a wig I could wear that would look good? Hell yeah. I Absolutely. think that would be more obvious than... No, because it's been two weeks. You could have changed your hairstyle. It would have grown by then. And surprise, look at me. I think it'd be fun. <laughs> I think it's worth it. I, I don't know what Natalie's comment is. I don't know if that's a lyric from a song, but I, I don't know. Oh, she meant to say ha ha, but instead said gaga. That's weird. I thought she was referring to Lady Gaga. I, I did too. I was like, we're getting a Lady Gaga song. I guess not. Whatever. No. 
Anyway, well, uh, are you uh, are you pain free now or still healing? I'm virtually pain free. The only pain I get is when I rehab it, or sometimes when I sleep, I'll wake up stiff. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> oh yeah, I do too. Every morning. Well, yeah. Oh, your shoulder. I'm talking gotcha. about shoulder. Yes. Yeah, arthritis. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. So, well, good. And so that was last week. And then the week before, uh, life once again gets in the way. That's what happens when you still have outside jobs and then you get stuck in a meeting that lasts longer than it's supposed to. So, uh, yeah, that's what brings us here today. Two weeks later. um, Did you have a trip or a trip coming up? Three weeks. We're at 19 days, I believe. Okay. I I knew it was sometime, somewhere. I couldn't remember. Yep, uh, thinking about taking the show on the road. Probably won't, though, because uh, probably just not going to have the coverage. So, <clears throat> well, eh. and yeah, and and that's fine because uh, there's there's I've got other stuff going on because uh, I exactly. need another surgery after this. Right, penile implant. No, God, no. Oh. oh okay, that one got canceled. No, no, I just don't need that. Oh, okay. I heard you did. No. Sorry. No. Okay. All right. Shoo! I was worried. I was worried. Something yeah. A lot, a lot higher up. Something in my nasal cavities. So I, I can't breathe. Will can't you breathe. have black eyes? No, I hope not. Wow. I mean, that'd be kind of cool. I Why? mean, good story. Because, man, you walk around, you got your black eyes, you got your hat on, you got your shoulder all effed up. You were in WrestleMania. Yeah, uh, April was a terrible month. Yeah, horrible. In like a lamb, out like a bitch. And not going to say shit about WrestleMania, except nope. night two is better than night one. Yep. Not going to bore everybody. No, but it was a lot of fun. It was. And if you missed it, you missed it. Can I mention right. one thing about wrestling? Okay. Okay. If you are even not into this, and it's not your thing, but you still want to watch something that will get you watch the Bray Wyatt documentary. Uh, you've said that before to me. Yeah. It came out uh, nine days ago. Came out April 1st. Can't do it. Can't do it. Did, did you watch it yet? Uh, yeah. Oh, well you just said you can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it again. Oh, can't, can't do it again. Not happening. Nope. The amount of allergies right. that, that were circulating in my, my house, which I thought was clean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can't do it. Cannot do it. Mm-mm. Uh, cool. That'd be a tough one. Uh, that'd be a Very tough one. Very much so. Yeah. Plus, so, his dad just went in the Hall of Fame. Mike Rotunda. Which was kind of cool. Yep, IRS himself and his uncle, Barry Windham. Uh, yeah, Barry Windham. Yep. Which is... Yeah, who he's basically named after. He is, yes. Because, so, you know, his name wasn't really Bray Wyatt. You're kidding. Wrestlers have different names than what they what? actually What? You mean they're not real? His, his, his name's not really The Rock? <laughs> I'm telling you, The Rock made uh, the lead up to WrestleMania and WrestleMania. We That'll literally happen. said we weren't talking about this, and here we go. I, I know. I know. Uh, Natalie just I, asked what the documentary was called. I'm going to give her that. It's uh, it's called Bray Wyatt Bray. Becoming Immortal. Um, man, I, it's uh, it's one of those things, you know. Even if you're not a fan of pro wrestling, because we're getting away from the term sports entertainment. Thank God, if you haven't noticed. Yeah, it's hard, but they're trying. Yeah, we're we're getting away from that. Even if you're not a fan, but you want to see the impact that a single person had, his untimely death, and you know what's followed after that. Um, watch it, you know, because this was a guy that was in his 30s, still has young children, and passed away. Watch it; it it's totally worth it. It's it's sad as heck. Yeah, because that that condition, he had a heart condition that that he didn't even know about, right, for uh, quite some time. Yeah, 
and they just recently found out about it before his death. And that's what they were trying to get situated so that he could maybe come back to the ring. Yeah. Uh, I think. I think that, and then, of course, that didn't happen. Well, he was making his return. You know, if you remember, I believe it was SummerSlam when he returned and he's like, I'm back or whatever, blew out the lantern. Yep. You know, these are these are all characters that, that are developed and lots of time put into, but not everyone puts the time and effort into their character like he did because a lot of them are, you know, created by creative. You know, within the the WWE or whatever promotion it may be, but uh, the amount of stuff that he put, just watch it. I mean, I, I can't say enough about it. It is it is unbelievable. Probably, in my opinion, it's probably the best one that's ever been done, and I hope they never have to do another one like that. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Uh, the bitter sweet ones are the hardest ones to get through. Yeah, but if you do watch it, and you are a fan of pro wrestling. Watch it until the end. Watch it until the credits are done. Does Thanos pop? That's an Easter egg. Thanos. Yeah, not going to tell you what it is. Um, I'll tell you off the air. But very good. Um, yeah, watch it. I know I've said that a billion times. Just, just watch it. It's very good. Um, <clears throat> I guess since we've already breached the subject of death uh we were hit in the music world like yes. two days ago with some ridiculous news um you and i and our uh, our buddy the sheriff this past summer uh went to um Terre Haute, indiana to the mill where we were there to see nelson and winger and firehouse and Jack great Russell's white. Great White. Um, lots of good stuff. Great music. I know we talked about it, you know, on the show afterwards and all that. A uh, couple days ago, we actually lost uh, CJ Snare, who is the lead singer for Firehouse. Um, at the young age, I'm going to say young age because I, to me, it's still young. Sixty four. Right, right, and, and when you say young age. You're not exaggerating because when we watched that show, we were blown away by, by how he moved, how he sounded, how he yeah. looked. Like everything about him said, this guy's not 64 years old. There's no way. And yeah. I didn't think he was. I, I looked it up while we were there. I thought he yeah. was closer to your age or mine, the way he was acting. Uh, no clue that he would have had any illness prior to this. Yeah. Uh, no clue that he would have been pulled off the road or, or anything after that for illness, the guy killed it. He just killed it. Yeah. And, and this is a founding member of firehouse. Correct. Along with two other guys that were still in the band. So, uh, that's, it was shocking. Number one. And, uh, kind of, kind of sad, really. And, and kind of scary. Kind of scary. You yeah. know, this is, um, I loved fire. I've loved firehouse since, since they came out and, you know, when you when you have something like this, that, that, that it was unexpected. This wasn't something that was like, oh, you know, he's he's on hospice or whatever. Uh, Sixty four. I know there's been some reports that he actually had a heart attack uh, that supposedly came from his daughter. Uh, there's other right. things too that uh, he was reportedly battling a long battle with. I believe it was colon cancer. Colon cancer. Um, but it doesn't matter what it was. I mean, it just sucks. Well, to to get because prior to us seeing him, he had uh, had the colon cancer, had been going through treatment for that, right? And uh, had some things that kind of helped helped him get back on stage medically. Uh, for him to even want to do that with his health, the way it was, uh, you know, it's so cool because it's a testament to wanting to do what you want to do and live life to the fullest as long as you can. Exactly. And this guy literally was living life to the fullest as long as he could. Yeah. And you doing know, a, were, doing a good job, having fun, enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, he sounded very, amazing. Yeah, he, he did. Uh, you know, we, we were both debating at the time, you know, who was better that night? Was Firehouse better than Winger? Was Winger better than Fire? I mean, when you have a show like that and you're, one of your opening bands is that good and sounds yeah. that great. Yeah, I mean, that, that's impressive and sad news 
for sure. Yeah. Um, one thing, uh, this just, I think, came out earlier today. Um, with the blessing of C.J. Snare's family, uh, Firehouse will honor him and his music and his legacy at their performance in Greenville, Tennessee, uh, this Saturday, April 13th. Um, Nate Peck, who we also saw in Terre Haute, that came in, and I believe he's the one that did some singing with um, with with Jack. Uh, Jack Russell. Yeah. Um, he's the 2023 American Idol Golden Ticket recipient from season 21. He will be handling the vocals at the show. Um, with CJ's full support, Nate had been singing with the band in CJ's absence over the past six months. So it should be pretty good. That's Again, that's where is that? Greenville, Tennessee, April 13th. Um, wish we could get down there to that. That was probably going to be an amazing show. You know, and maybe it's too soon to even contemplate this, but uh, if that, you know, have the singer that has been with them the last few months, uh, do they even want to continue as Firehouse, you know, without CJ? Yeah, I and, I, and I'm sure that's something that they're going to breach, you know, over the next, I don't know, maybe a couple months. It may take a while. You know, what, what, here's the big thing that everybody's always wondering too. Where's the, un, uh, the unreleased stuff? Is there going to be some, you know, some cool like firehouse album, you know, in memory of, or something like that. So yeah, it sucks. I, if you're, if you're going to lose somebody in your band, obviously your lead singer is, is, you know, top. Right. Lead singer and, and, and uh, primary songwriter. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and this is a band, uh, I, I know Firehouse, I think had three, three songs in the top 40 when uh, that style of music was waning. Yeah. Because if you know, Firehouse came along toward the end of the uh, 80s, early 90s, right in there. Yep. Uh, they were that last group of uh, glam metal type bands that were coming out in the, uh, out of LA and such. And uh, they were one of the better ones, one of the more successful ones. And uh, I think he, uh, I think was, I read three or four, you know, at least top forty songs, which at that time is pretty darn impressive because now MTV is winding down their presence with those bands. Uh, we know what happened when the uh, Great Wall of Grunge came down. Yeah, everyone shut out. They put out records after that that were still good, uh, still really really good. There is a video, if you can find it on YouTube, because uh, we'll get into this here in a minute with uh, about Lizzie Hale, but I just wanted to mention, uh, when she is something like 14 years old, she is on a street corner with her brother CJ playing drums, her dad is playing bass, and Lizzie is playing the guitar, of all things, because uh, this is the point where she's transitioning from piano to guitar at like 14 years old, and they are singing a song called Dream by Firehouse, who uh, they had, uh, I believe, had even met uh, through some connection uh, his uh, their dad had. And, uh, you know, talked about how cool they were. And in this uh, short little video, they're on a little street corner at uh, a local festival, you know, just singing along, b uh, busking uh, uh, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, a 14-year-old Lizzie Hale out there singing Firehouse songs. So if you get if you get time later, or maybe I'll send it to you. It's it's, it's kind of fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Firehouse's uh, last released studio album was in 2011, um, but their last and, and it had some re-recorded versions <laughs> of their older songs. Uh, their last collection of new material was Prime Time, which came out in 2003. And to me, that's a testament. Now, granted, there's a lot of other bands, you know, from from that era that are touring and not releasing stuff. But it just goes to show you that, you know, there's a band that hasn't released a, a brand new studio album in over 20 years, still out kicking ass and doing a good job, not just showing up to, you know, earn that, that weekend paycheck or whatever. I mean, it was a great show. It was, it was, it was really, really good. Uh, every element was covered with that band. And like I said, that, you know, uh, th between them and Winger, they were just about stealing the night. I mean, you were super impressed with nelson uh simply because you weren't expecting anything out of nelson exactly so i mean and even jack russell uh with his health issues and and sort of thing you know that guy's out there 
uh, trucking along uh, any chance he gets to sing. And still, you know, for the most part, is effective as a singer. He struggles, uh, age and, and such, and the style of music. But, you know, I I mean, he's not using tapes. Commend him for that. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, interesting fact, too, that in 1992, uh, Firehouse won the American Music Award for Favorite Heavy Metal Hard Rock New Artist. Uh, and they actually beat out Nirvana into Alice in Chains. <laughs> that is so interesting. Yeah. You said, what, 92? 92. So, so the Great Wall is down. Yeah. And, and, and they, Firehouse, slides under the gate, through the pavement, you know, onto the other side for a brief moment and beats out those vans mm-hmm. that were everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. That's a that's a credit to uh, the strength of that record, uh, the strength of the fans that were still there, you know, trying to cling on to, you know, some vestige of, you know, that music. Yeah. That, you know, that is still, that is still back. Not just Firehouse, but uh, think of all the bands from that era that still tour uh, and do very, very well. And then sit and think of the grunge bands and where they're at today. Yeah. And, and, and that's not a knock on whether grunge was good, bad. Or, I mean, everything I think sometimes needs a reset or a shakeup. Yeah. Um, but I know what is this Stone Temple Pilots? That, that, they're the only ones I can think of that have really been out. Well, uh, Pearl Jam just released a new song, uh, maybe did. even the album. I don't know, but that's been recent within the last month, yeah. I think. Yes, and they fly so far under the radar, sometimes you miss it. Right. So you got Pearl Jam, one of the one of the originators, and uh, and Alice in Chains, I think, because uh, and that's a that might be about it. Yeah, or at least all that I know. I mean, yeah, I'd have to look, but I don't know. If, uh, is STP still doing anything? Stone Temple Pilots, you know, Soundgarden isn't. No, uh, I don't. I mean. So, so the, the the impact that the grunge bands had was just crushing to the metal that we liked. Yeah. But what has endured now? Look who's getting ready to come around uh, to America, Judas Priest, with a fantastic record. Yeah, uh, it, it just fascinates me uh, how, you know, you can't kill rock and roll. Yeah, that, you you, they should have a song. There should be a song like there that. There should be a song called Can't Kill Rock and Roll. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was reading through some of this stuff about, uh, about CJ snare and I, I came across that, that thing about the American music award. And it was like, man, you know, it's just like you said, thinking about those bands that they beat out and that time. Um, so yeah, it sucks. We lost CJ Perry and, uh, or CJ snare, sorry. And yeah, it sucks. So hey, Perry, I know. Right. It, it, can't make up these names i swear um how rich do you want to be i uh, honestly how rich would i like to be sure i think i'm like a lot of people if i could uh take care of my debt mm-hmm. and not work the rest of my life or work minimally even sure that rich that rich maybe, maybe share some with your family definitely your uh, yeah. your your podcast co-host, probably. Um, you know stuff like that. Uh, so, Kiss is in the news again. Yep. Um, it's made a lot of money. Yeah, I'm yeah. a little disappointed yeah. in the amount, actually, just did, from a you, business standpoint. But did you uh, think it would... more. Wow. I was okay. thinking upwards of six to eight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. But um, so what he's talking about is. Is his, uh, <laughs> last week sold their catalog name, logo and makeup rights to a Swedish company for three hundred million dollars. How much? Three hundred million. Three hundred million. Three hundred million. And that's for. Uh, well, this is the company that uh, is also involved in their Avatar show. Right. The Swedish. Do you know who owns this Swedish company? 
Um, I'm going to say the chef. No, no. Uh, it's uh, like the guys from ABBA. Shut the front door. <laughs> Seriously, it's the guys from ABBA. I know they're the ones that developed that ABBA avatar show, but I didn't know they owned it. Yeah, uh, that company has been formed for that ABBA avatar show that is a precursor to what KISS is doing. One missed opportunity. They should have called it an avatar. <laughs> See, Gene, I'm hashtagging that. Gene would have thought about that. Yeah. So it's, it's called Pop Pop House is the company. Yeah. Yeah, Pop House. You're, you're not moving on from hashtag avatar. Okay, I do like it. Okay. Now we're good. Now we're good. I mean, okay, yeah. Uh, $300 million, man. I, I think it's a good, healthy chunk. I don't know where that rates with everyone else that's done it. Elton John, Springsteen, uh, all of those guys. But, they, I mean, I don't know that they were making $300 million. Do you? Yeah. No, no clue. But to me, yeah. and, and the reason I said, you know, a, a much higher number um, to me, this is KISS. They've been around for 112 years. They've continued. I mean, they merchandise everything. I mean, when you have KISS condoms and KISS coffins, KISS lunch boxes, you have everything KISS that you could ever want. But yet you sell it for, and I'm going to say a measly, $300 million. Well... To me, that just seems very low for, for Kiss. Uh, given you know the makeup rights, uh, yeah, the music rights, the makeup alone, you know, is quite a bit. I would think. I'm trying to locate what Elton John got because he his was pretty big. Well, if it's any consolation while you're looking that up, I'll, I'll, I will let you know that Gene Simmons said that uh, the sale of those rights wasn't about the money. No, what, it never is. What the F other would it be about? I mean, come on. Really? I don't know why he says that or why anyone says that. It's all about the money. Yeah, I was born at night, but I wasn't born yesterday, so... That's how that saying goes, I think. I'm actually yeah, looking my, too, and I'm not seeing um, I'm not seeing numbers. Yeah, my computer's moving really slow. I can't. Um, all right, mine will most expensive music catalog. I, that's why I love technology because we can do this on the fly. Here we go. Artists with the most expensive music catalogs ever sold. Um, let's get to Bruce Springsteen. Okay, there's one. Commanded the highest sales tag, five hundred and fifty million. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, but think about that. It's Bruce Springsteen, five hundred and fifty million. Kiss has been around for seventy five years longer than him, and they only do three hundred. No, it's about the same. You know, Bob Dylan. 300 million. Okay. Um, Phil Collins and Genesis. 300 million. Sting. And I don't mean the wrestler. Oh. 300 million. David Bowie, 250 million. Katy Perry. 225 million. Explain to me why... Katy Perry has already done this. Uh, fireworks. I, I think that's the name of her song. I don't know. I, I, I no idea. The overall net worth of Katy Perry increased from uh, less than two hundred million dollars to three hundred forty in September of twenty twenty three, with a sale of her music catalog to Litmus Music. Five studio albums. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. So look at what Kiss has as far as studio records. Right. And she's almost up to where they're at. Justin um, Bieber. 
sold his for two hundred million. Yeah, but I think he's about done with music. <laughs> I think he's made all he needs to make. And then there's Motley Crue. And they too have sold theirs out. One hundred and fifty million dollars. That's it. That's it. That's what blows my mind at the, the the difference in these prices between you know what people will pay. I don't know. I mean, whatever. Who rates it? How do you rate something like that? Oh, it's the company. I'm sure they're going to come in and be like, "Here you go. Here's 150 million." Now we don't know if there's other things in there. Like you know, do they keep getting money for? you know, royalties or whatever, but, you know, maybe that's just the cold, hard cash. This is what's on the table. Boom, you well, get $150 million. Well, Kiss doesn't own the music. That's that's what's different. Oh, right. So this, this is not going to include all of the music catalog. This is just their, their share of it because right. uh, Universal owns the Kiss catalog. So this is not everything. True. So potentially this could have been bigger well and maybe uh, that's will, why it wasn't and i'll defend i'll defend springsteen just because uh that guy uh, just had a string of hits string of hits i can name uh, one well i can name more than one but <laughs> name that tune yeah well you had born in the usa well, no you that was to... uh, not not for real oh damn <laughs> i am not wasting my time on here talking about bruce string <laughs> Neil Young sold his 150 million. Red Hot Chili Peppers 140 to 150. So it, it, it's all over the board. And some well, of these I understand, but I don't understand Katy like Perry. The, Do what? Middle. Yeah, they're on the high end of middle. Yeah. If 500 million is the high end. Yeah. Okay. And that was what was this? This was as of 2023. So yeah. So here's here's another thought I had when I was thinking of this story. Um, who gets included in this? Kiss Kiss on paper is Gene and Paul. Okay. Uh, Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer are hired help. Sure. In the case of Ace Fraley and Peter Chris, do they get a cut? I'm sure they will. Uh, just out of generosity from you know Gene and Paul. But my thought was Ace, Peter, Bruce, do they get anything? I mean, that's a good question. You know, out of the, I mean, I mean, they would get royalties probably. Whatever royalties they already get, they, they get that, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, out of this sale, the $300 million, I, I just wonder, is there some legal wrangling that, that includes them? You know, because because even though contractually, when you get you know you're kicked out of these bands and there's a lot of legal meetings and a lot of things going on, and on paper you are no longer in Kiss, for example, sometimes that doesn't mean that you're not getting money out of it still. You know, I mean, Ace Ace sold his rights to his to his likeness, the makeup. Right. Uh, so they they could argue that money's already gone, but I I bet he could probably still finagle some cash out of this. I bet he could. And I think he, I think though they, I would think just to avoid lawsuits, they'll do it. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, I'm looking at something very, very interesting right here. This article came out in, this was four years ago. Um, if you remember this, I did not until I started reading uh, where Metallica was involved in a multi million dollar purchases of artist catalog. They. Rumored to be involved in an intellectual property acquisition venture called the World Wired Music IP Fund. Um, it also included Morgan Stanley, or an investment banker from Morgan Stanley, ex-Fender president, and ex-Sony ATV co-president, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if it ever happened, but um, a source stressed that the venture was not directly inspired by the startup Hypnosis songs. Hypnosis, great way to spell that, which has spent over $1 billion buying up hit songwriter and producer catalogs in just two years. However, that company has certainly proven and driven up the value of song catalogs. Um, that was co-founded 
by former Elton John, Beyonce, and Iron Maiden manager, Merck Mercer. Don't ask me to spell that. Did you say Beyonce, Elton John, and Iron Maiden manager? Yeah, he was, he was a manager, uh, former manager for them, yes. Wow, that's interesting. That's a eclectic group. Yeah. No word on what the full scope of the IP fund is or what Metallica plans on doing with fund. I mean, I don't know. That was four years ago. I could probably look and see now. Not that interested. Well, I'm just, you know, I could see doing it if you needed money. Sure. Uh, I can see doing it if uh, you can't take it with you kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I guess, but uh, I don't know. I always felt like you wanted to hang on to your legacy a little bit and have some control. Well, yeah. Look at Elton John. He still refuses to sell his. Yeah, that's why I just was reading. I hadn't got around to talking about it, but I yep. mentioned him as a, uh, an example. But he's keeping a hold of his. You know, because uh, once you sell these uh, these properties to these companies, that means now they can turn and sell them to advertising and commercials. Right. And there's an upside to that. And the upside is all, the, all of a sudden we're hearing Kiss songs everywhere. You know, and that, of course, may help the catalog the back catalog that we got sure that you know that they would get royalties off of that's still more money that's the upside um the downside is i don't know what control you have over where it's used that's got to be contractual it's going to have to be you know that that's inter that's attorney talk right there we don't know no and i i, I certainly would want to hash it out you can't use it here but you can use it here right you know, it's kind of like licensing songs for political campaigns or Budweiser right. commercials, Super Bowl right. stuff, you know, whatever. Yeah, right. It's, it's interesting. This is going to make it easier for every WWE superstar to have a name band with uh, uh, as their theme song. Sure. <laughs> They're all going to have a theme song now because it's going to be cheaper. Yeah. I mean, we, we, yeah. Had it, we had it during WrestleMania when the, the band was literally there playing somebody's theme song. Uh, Rhea Ripley. Yeah. And was it Motionless and White? Motionless and White. Yeah. I wasn't so sure that they weren't the same person, by the way. Dude, when they first did the close-up on the <laughs> ramp of that guy singing yeah. for half a second, I thought, oh, my God, Rhea Ripley's doing this? Yeah. And I was no, like, what? she's singing. No, she stole that look. <laughs> Somebody stole that look from one of one of them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, find... before you had a bunch of money to have those rights, you know, for Edge or, uh, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. How many of all the songs, you know, uh, uh, the, you know, you have to pay a lot of money for that stuff. Uh, how much uh, does Living Color get for CM Punk? Right. Using a cult of personality. For so, years. For years. And, and two companies having to buy the rights to that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now you got bands that are selling to one company who says, "Okay, this is the this is the price," and I bet it's a lot cheaper. I bet it is. That's interesting. They, yeah, they want the exposure. Of course they do, especially with with the popularity. Um, yeah, and they use that song, like you said, different companies or whatever. So, so you never know. I'm going to pull something up here, see if I can get this to pop up. You're not going to be able to see it if you're just listening, but whatever. Maybe that'll entice you to join. Yes, right there. So here you go. Good. And the reason I say that is is uh, Rhea used to slick her hair back like that. Yes. And so, uh, you know, the same makeup style, that kind of thing. And for half a second, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah. I'm a little confused here. So if you're looking at it, the picture on the left, it's two pictures on the screen. Picture on the left, on the right side of the left picture, is Chris Motionless. I think that's his name, Chris, right? I don't know. I know okay. they're motionless. Right. Yeah. Rhea Ripley is there on the left. WWE Women's Heavyweight Champion. Yeah. Brother and sister. They could be. They're not, but they could be. Could be. Are you picking your nose? No. Okay, good. I just want to make sure before I took the picture down. Or if, if you had your hat off. No, it ain't happening. I, I tried. I tried. You know what? Speaking of that, where in the heck is Kathy? 
I don't know. I thought she'd be here tonight. Yeah. And I just realized that Shannon tried to correct me, and she said I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. No. I was born last night, but not yesterday. We're sticking with that. <laughs> Which makes no damn sense. Whatever. Makes sense to me. Um, so, we talk about bands. Right. We talk, talk about... Talk about bands and singers and, you know, singers leave, singers go. Uh, yeah. Can add another one to that list. Right. While, Big, while we were off. This yeah. Happened. Big thing. Uh, Skid Row recently parted ways with their current, not so current lead singer. Uh, amicably. That means on friendly terms. For those that don't know what amicably means, me, um, yeah, he uh, he battled some uh, health issues last few years, and excuse me, but and has decided that uh, it was time for him to go. So he did. He left, and what now I have to get a drink because Eric Gronwall. Gronwall. Mm-hmm. I'm really not choking. I swear. <laughs> Uh, he, I think he also had a, uh, you know, family that he was wanting to take care of. Be more uh, being on the road is tough. Yeah, and he, he, and he absolutely left to focus on his health, yep. family, and all that. And he is Swedish. Uh, I don't think he lives in the U.S. No, you know, so that's a, that's a big commitment uh, to come over here because uh, most of the bread and butter for Skid Row is going to be in the U.S. Right, and he's also not a part of ABBA. No, no, but they may be getting his rights soon. Yes, for his avatar. <laughs> Got it again. His avatar. Yes. Uh, so did you hear who filled in for Eric Gronwall upon his departure? I don't think it's happened yet because uh, the dates oh, are in May. That's right. Yeah, so the, they, they've got six shows, five shows left mm -hmm. on their current little tour. Um, and I did hear who it was and I'm very impressed. Uh, I think it's cool as heck. Uh, it's badass. I think it's badass. They got, uh, Lizzie Hale from Kenny Rogers. Oh, <laughs> Lizzie Hale from <laughs> Hailstorm. One of my favorites. Yep. To fill in for those handful of shows. Uh, I think it's going to be stellar. Uh, she's played with them before, uh, just got up on stage before and played with them. She's and their music. Them. Yeah. Yeah, she's covered Slave to the Grind uh, on a Hailstorm EP before. Uh, sounded amazing. She's got the vocal chops to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be really, really good and get her good and warmed up for a summer tour that they are doing. So, Hailstorm. Yeah, and it actually surprised me. I mean, I know she's done stuff with them in the past, but I didn't think it would be because that was almost announced like the same day. Yeah, no hesitation. Yeah. It's probably it was that phone call. Hey, Eric's leaving. Can you fill in this summer? Hey, let me check my schedule. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Yeah, you know, I guess, uh, I guess, why would you turn it down for something fun like that? It's not like she has got a stable gig to go to, right? And you go get to play, uh, you know, some kick-ass music you grew up listening to. Yeah, yeah. You know, Lizzie's familiar with all that great music. Uh, you know, like we talked about earlier in the show with the influence of her dad and stuff and playing a lot of those songs anyway, when she was younger. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sure Kid Rose right on that list. You know. Of course, this has undoubtedly swirled right, up the rumors again. Yep. This has opened the, the door again for yeah. the return Maybe. of the original singer, Sebastian Bach. Exactly. Uh, did you say you saw something recently? I, or I know I have where he has talked about, he cannot understand why this is not happening. Well, yeah, sort of, kind of. Um, he's admitted that uh, he feels like a piece of shit because he's unable to reunite with the band. Um, he opened up recently in a, in a separate interview about his time with it. And you got to think, he's done three albums with Skid Row. Just really getting going. You know, these guys were young, dumb, got all this money, you know, he's got a huge ego or did at the time, huge, whatever. Huge ego and a big mouth. Yeah. 
And in <laughs> 90 something. Right. And so he departs, well, departs. They he left, was fired, whatever you want to say, in 96. Um they were offered a chance to open for Kiss, but the other members turned it down because of scheduling conflicts. And if you remember, Kiss was a major influence on Sebastian Bach. Um, right. He went off on them, and they said, great, fired. Well, that was the, the final straw, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when, what year did you say that was? That was 96 when he split. Right, because they come out with a subhuman race in '95. Correct, and that would win. And Kiss is putting out their grunge record at that right. point. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. So that would have been a blast, I'm sure, to, to be on that tour. And you know, I'm sure Sebastian's like, make the time, you know. It, it, but yeah, but you have commitments. <laughs> you know, you have commitments, and maybe you feel like you got to keep those commitments. Well, maybe it wasn't his priority to keep those commitments. Here we go again, yeah. another band from that time, Skid Row, who's still out there pumping out new music, still out there touring with a majority of original members, well, with the exception of one. Right, right. And I uh, no, he, uh, drummer, I, I think, too. His, I don't I haven't read his book. But Sebastian apparently has got an autobiography where it's uh, a pop up. It's a pop up. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he was told because there was some, at the time, the, the autobiography was coming out. I think it was 2018, even, maybe something like that. Uh, there was some flattering talk coming his way that, hey, we might reconcile. And he had put a bunch of uh, stuff in that book that was uh, exploitative of his feelings with uh, the band and members in the band and his manager. I think it was his manager or publisher said, Hey, take all that stuff out, you know, to edit that book and take all of it out. And Sebastian and I commend him for it. You know, he says, I think this is what people want to read when they read my story. I want to tell my story. So I'll know I'm not taking that out. And, and, and it wasn't that he didn't want to reunite. He did, but I think he wanted to tell the truth of how he felt about his time in the band. Right keeps it in the book and we're still waiting on Sebastian to come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, he, uh, he's definitely looking at it now. Um, he's expressed interest in reconvening with them as he would, I'm sure, but nobody else seems to think this is going to work. However, this may be the time. This it may be it. It is definitely the time. He's 56. Believe it or not, he is only 56. Yeah. And he was one of the younger members of the band at the time. He was only 19 when he joined. So, uh, I mean, if you're going to do it, you know, his quote is, uh, you know, let's do it while, while I still have hair or we still have hair right. kind of thing. I, I agree that any issues you had with him – we're in, you know, the culmination of 1987 to 95. Uh, that's been a while. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. You know, people, people uh, mature over time. You know, Sebastian will always be Sebastian, but I'm sure he's matured quite a bit since then. Since 96, I would certainly hope so. Uh, and We're talking I think nearly 30 years. Do you, th I can't believe that the potential money that, that that would generate has not motivated them more than what it has. Can you be so pissed off at someone that you're literally going to throw away that money? I mean, what, what do we not know? Who knows? But like you right. said, a reunion tour? Holy crap. Go on tour with Motley Crue. Right. Because I think you would. You I have you to. I, I think. I think uh, at your level now, you're at a theater club level. You and you might latch onto some shed shows uh, opening for somebody. I think you elevate yourself considerably when you bring in Sebastian, just for the uh, fan appeal. You know the fan appeal because because your casual Skid Row fan probably hasn't bought or listened to the solo records he's put out. Right. Uh, they've 
they, they probably don't know they're out there because they're not promoted like they should be. Uh, he is getting ready to put another one out because we, we talked about it on here and put the video up on our Facebook, I believe. Uh, yeah. Pretty good song. Pretty yeah, well, good song. Uh, that's getting ready to come out. So uh, I still I, and I still don't think the majority of fans, especially ones our age, even know uh, that he's around doing anything. Oh, no. And he's not stopped. He's not stopped. Nope. So the fan appeal and the fan level would be uh, pretty high, pretty high. Yeah, I, I, I would go. I would absolutely go. Oh, certainly, certainly. You, know. you hook them up, like you said, with, with Motley Crue or, or GNR or something like that. Uh, uh, that'd be a big show. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, it'd be freaking amazing. Um, you were telling me something. You actually sent me something the other day that uh, shocked me because I wasn't expecting it at the time. And then when you sent it and I got it and I watched it, I flipped my lid. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about uh, uh, the Cassandra Carson piece. I sent oh, you. yeah. Our buddy Cassandra. Yeah. She uh, recently uh, paired up with a production company to, uh, uh, they, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but they're, they're basically highlighting their production uh, unit that they're using for vocals. And uh, Cassandra, who has been compared to Lizzie Hale vocally, for quite some time, uh, went into the studio and did a cover of Hailstorm's uh, I Miss the Misery. Yeah. And killed it. Killed it. It was amazing. You know, yeah. It, it was it was as good as uh, good as what Lizzie was doing at the, uh, with it. You know, it, it, there's uh, some differences in nuance. Well, on the high end, uh, you know, because Lizzie's very polished. Uh, on what she does and has been doing it a long time, but man, Cassandra, uh, I, I actually commented on it on her Instagram and she, uh, you know, she gave me a good old thumbs up. Yeah. Cause in the positive, but I don't know if you paid attention, uh, to the, how, how red her face got. Oh yeah. I was getting ready to talk about the, the I enjoyed watching her sing it. Yeah. Like it yeah, hurt because- me. <laughs> It can't be easy. It can't no. be easy. You know, I, and I, I don't know how you sustain that type of vocal over the years. I, I know Lizzie uh, is, is very, very good about how she takes care of her throat and her, her vocal cords. Yeah. And does a lot of stuff to take care of herself. But uh, either way, I mean, and, and Cassandra's a bit younger. So, yeah. It was cool. If you uh, if you get a chance to check it out uh, on It'd be on uh, Peril Andra's uh, Instagram page or Cassandra Carson's Instagram page, or maybe we can find a way to post it. I wonder, that's what I was getting ready to see. I wonder if they've put it up on uh, the YouTubes or something. Ah, yeah, we need to check it out. If so, we'll we'll do something, get it up there on our Facebook yeah. page. Yeah, I'm going to look now. I'll find it. Yeah, we'll look later, see if we can get it up there. Um, touching on some of our previous guests, um, Bridges of Blaze got some new new stuff coming out soon. Um, I've heard a little bit of it here and there from their social media. Sounds amazing. Sounds like it's going to be really good. Um, of course, Cassandra Carson, who we just had on most recently too. You know, with this stuff that's going on with her and and putting this out. I mean, the stuff that that's getting put out by the people that we've had on here mm-hmm. is just getting better and better. Um, uh, right, uh, Karabi, uh, the Dead Daisies are getting ready to put a record out. Right, uh, so that's going to be fun to to listen to. Yeah, so Might have you know, talk about. exactly. You know, we may have to get a little revisit. Who knows? Um, big shout out. We didn't get to do this the last couple of weeks, but uh, big shout out to to Dick Weibrow, uh for joining us a couple of weeks ago. That was a that was an awesome interview. If you haven't read his books, jump in there, take a look. Dick is a very entertaining person. Um, shoot, I think we talked for another 20, 30 minutes off the air when we were done just because he's got so much to tell. Um, so that was... Yeah, th- that we was did fun. that, and I, and I emailed him like for another hour after that. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. 
Um, so yeah, you know, we appreciate our guests and when we can see them succeeding and, and doing these things, um, it makes it just even that much better for us and, uh, you know, makes us happy that we've had these good people on that we can bring to you, the, the listener, viewer, whatever you are this week. Um, so yeah, you know, that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah I do not, great. I do not have a joke for you this week. Not at all. No, I'm I'm a little no, nothing. I no, I don't. I'm sorry. I have nothing. I, nothing. Anybody? Okay. Anybody got one? No. Okay. Oh well. Uh, we'll be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Can we say that or is that copyrighted? No, nah, you're good. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us this week on the Weekly Poor Podcast. I'm TBT, that guy's Ace, and that's Ace's hat. It is. Say bye, hat. Bye, hat.